Okay, just for peace of mind, I'm going to take the Grams 1000cc injectors to have flow tested. I'm going to Boost Lab. Check those guys out. They do flow testing, balancing of injectors, as well as turbo rebuilds and turbo upgrades. Check those guys out. I'm going to go ahead and take my lovely ZR1 for a drive. It's about 35 miles from the shop, so a good excuse to drive the car and stretch its legs a little bit and have some fun on the way. Hey Siri, take me to Boost Lab in Tampa. Getting directions to Boost Lab. So easy. Alright, so head south on 46th Street North. Then turn right head there. Take the north. injectors. Hopefully they don't show any problems. I think our problem was just too much boost and not enough octane. So the good news is we're fixing it. We got pistons and rods coming. Uh, bearings, gaskets, all that good stuff. Uh, we'll have that thing back together, break in the rings, put it back on the dyno, verify everything is good. I'm not gonna push. To the route. I'm not gonna push the limits anymore. I don't think we need to. It was making more than we needed. Again, just got carried away. Again. Turn right onto 62nd Avenue North. It happens to the best of us, right? Again, if I didn't tell you it happened. I won't be that honest. So sometimes you gotta show the good and the bad. Injectors, right? Yeah. So I got a bit of the X cylinder one through four, and uh, we'll see what happens. So you were saying that two is going to be the. It was number two. If I have any questions, and again, I might just be looking into it, but number two is the one that let go, and the cylinder was super clean. So I don't know if the injector stuck open and washed the cylinder and hydro locked it and broke the piston. Yeah. But it was cast pistons that we were running way too much. <laughs> Carried away on the dyno. You know that needle is a little erratic? Yeah. It might be telling me something that's going on intermittently with one of the injectors. Typically this is solid. Yeah. So let me just run through a auto test real quick. Just kind of put it through its paces.
ethanol vape run through these? No, just gas. And he's just spraying a even amount right now, right? Just like yeah, opening just, it for, uh, for four seconds, just static wide open at 43 psi. Okay. 45. Yeah. Wow, surprisingly even, I mean. Yeah, it looks like to me these are going to be pretty even, right where they need to be, actually. Yeah. So they're spraying at about 93 to 94 pounds per hour, and that e equals out to around 1,000 cc's. So either where they're supposed to be. Okay. Um, how much yeah. boost are you running? Uh, an undisclosed amount. <laughs> 18, 19. Okay. More than what we should have done. Looks like number four is down a little bit, right? Maybe just a tiny, just tiny, a tiny bit. bit. I mean, that's negligible. Maybe like one or, one or two pounds. Oh, I, oh, yeah. I guess over that whole bowl. Yeah. So this is what I'll do here. Is I will set it up. Put it at 30 seconds. Your base base pressure is right at about 48. 48? Yeah, 48-ish. It's about right there. see anything back off. That's how you would start to taper. Okay. So, okay, so right when it hits the 120 mount, that's where it clicks them off, but you're not even getting that kind of fuel pressure, so. No. We're not running a boost reference hose, so it's it's 48 oh, all the time. Oh, just Yeah. Okay. What's the duty cycle right now? 50? 50, 50. What else if you go to 90? Do they, what, where's the shut off point on these injectors? Where do they just go silly? Um, I mean, they say 85% is where you want to be at max. I've seen these go up to 105 and still be okay. Oh, wow. Theoretically. Okay. Yeah, it's not something you want to do. I know I have a couple of cars I've tuned and I've sat at 85 and I've been kind of nervous at 85 and tried yeah. to make adjustments. But I've seen some cars come in and put them on the dyno and look at the data and they're running 90, 95%, which yeah. scares me. So it's like on the LS3 injector. Uh, that's the base injector that ID used to modify for the 725s. Yeah. Uh, that base injector, I have seen over 105% duty cycle. It still actually worked on a supercharged Camaro. Yeah. Again. I didn't want to see that. It isn't ideal, but yeah. it, it works. As soon as, you, as soon as the customer brought it in to me and showed me what he was working with, I backed that thing back down and got into a safe zone. But it was running. So it was yeah. a metal rock kit. Okay. That's good to know. So, the Bosch injectors, for the most part, they're all pretty good as far as limitations on movie cycle yeah. and pressure. Well, that's definitely good to know. I do appreciate you showing us that test and seeing what goes on. Yeah, so I'm going to do, I'm still going to put it to the cleaning cycle anyways. 
just because there's some things I can't replicate here on the bench and how they were on the vehicle. Yeah. Let's say if there was something bouncing around inside the injector, you know, when it was on the dyno at that particular moment, that stuck that pedal just slightly shut to lead it out, blow a hole in the piston or what have you. Yeah. Uh, a lot of times I can't replicate that on the bench. Sure. Uh, Kirk had a Supra, same deal going on, ejector kept sticking open, put on the bench, it was fine, put it back on the car, it stick open again, finally we just cleaned them, put it back on the car, and they're at the front of again. Okay, so awesome. It's like 300%. And this is the magic formula? Yeah, this is the... Uh, Listerine? Yeah, that's it. Get this right from the grocery store, anybody can do this, that right? That's it. All you need to do is soak your injectors in Listerine. <laughs> and when you ruin them, bring them up here, we'll fix them. Yeah. No, we'll just replace them with a new set. We actually might have found a new way to clean them. <laughs> Alright, so this is a unit came in. Someone shipped this unit. You'll gotta walk, pull it apart, diagnose it. Yeah, we gotta figure out what happened with it. Just so we can go fix it, give it back to the customer, and same thing happens again. Yeah. What kind of turbo is this? It's a Garrett ball bearing uh, GT2871R. Okay, very popular turbo. Yeah. Is this what was known as the disco potato? Similar size, right? You used to call it? I'm not even sure, honestly. <laughs> I remember. I can't keep up with all the names. <laughs> you gotta be cool, you gotta find a funny name on them. <laughs> I used to have customers come to my shop and say, I've got a 92 Honda bubble back. Yeah. I go, what the heck is that? <laughs> and they go, oh, sorry, 92 Civic hatchback. I go, no, oh, okay. It's the 2871 RS, right? Yeah, that was the, yeah. Now, if I get in the way, it definitely makes things easier, right? Oh, if I stand between you and your tools, that's that's what <laughs> ultimately you like. So you carry pretty much most of the spares for all of these now, right? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, through the years, we kind of found out what's popular, like, you know, what people send in, what people run. Yeah. And we kind of figured out what people also break. So we know what to keep here in stock. <laughs> keep, yeah. Keep the common stuff. Yeah. If you look back here, the actual car the bearing carrier actually exploded on there. Oh, yeah. So I'm bleeding the thing. He probably ran this thing uh, with no oil. See all this Teflon in here? Yeah. More than likely, a lot of that went in the actual the, uh, bearing pin plugged up some of the oil holes actually yeah you can see right there a little teflon right there that's the internal restrictor on the all the um GT. the gear gt series turbochargers yeah. they all have this internal yeah. restrictor yeah it's really common people use teflon on yeah on a, a fitting that's supposed to be an an style exactly. or a taper fitting yeah there's yeah. a taper fitting right here yeah so. it's a clean dry joint you don't put them together with yep. teflon yeah we see this i try and educate people but people love that teflon Oh yeah. <laughs> Put it on everything. Pipe threads, AN fittings, banjo bolts. We had a guy put it around a banjo bolt and put it in. <laughs> and that's the, the exact thing you don't do with a banjo yeah, bolt. Yeah, we get them all the time with, uh, you know, on AN lines. Yeah. Where they have them on literally both sides. Yeah, we everywhere. Get it's like, what are you doing?